Hi everyone, it's Emily and I'm back with this as my background, but today I'll be talking about all the games I played in July. So in July, I ended up beating one game and sort of dabbling around with a lot of other games um, that I'll get into in a bit. Um, but first I wanted to talk about the game I beat, which was AI, The Insomnian Files. And I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite visual novels that I've had the pleasure of playing. So I'll share my thoughts about this game, um, spoiler free of course. So on the surface level, AI The Somni Files is a detective story where you have to solve a murder mystery. And this has a bit of a sci-fi twist in that your partner happens to be an advanced AI who resides in your eyeball basically. And one of the main tools you use is to jump into people's dreams to sort of unlock the truth. So this game balances both visual novel aspects as well as some interesting point and click um, puzzle mechanics. So the visual novel aspect is pretty straightforward. It's just you interacting with your environment and clicking on all those different objects to find out clues or kind of funny side commentary. But the more puzzle aspects is part of the dreamscape where you have to interact with someone's dreams to unlock what they refer to as mental locks and to sort of unravel what's going on in the person's mind that they're hiding or they're not able to reveal. So there are a few different highlights throughout this game. I think the story is really strong and especially as you start to um, reveal the different routes, I like how they all kind of piece together um, and build upon themselves. So many different visual novels I played sort of are more like an alternative universe sort of route and they don't really interact with one another. So I thought AI The Insomnia Files did a really good job of making it so that all the routes sort of mattered and helped you sort of piece together what's truly going on in the story. I also really liked all the different characters. The main character was rather pervy, but honestly it was in a pretty hilarious way um, how he interacted with the different characters and um, sort of how some things unfolded on that front. And um, all the different characters have a very distinct personality, which I appreciated as well. And I'm really excited for when I eventually get to the sequel, a lot of the characters will also be in that story. Gameplay wise, I really enjoyed actually all the different interactive puzzles. And um, this is a timed sort of sequence in that you only have six minutes um, allocated for the dreamscape. Not really on real time, but six minutes of in-game actions. But I thought they handled it really cleverly in that the different actions you choose will help you kind of debuff, if you will, um, the running time. So you can strategically um, do the different um, point and click interactions so that you're able to get everything done um, before time runs out. Sometimes it took me a while to kind of figure out exactly which interaction will help uh, maximize my time because a few of them, especially towards the end, it's very tight on time. But overall, I really enjoyed that as someone who really doesn't like time limits in my games. And to wrap up my thoughts for this game, I really enjoyed it. Um, honestly, I think it might be my favorite visual novel I played to date so far. But yeah, I definitely recommend this to anyone who enjoys visual novels. Um, with some interesting gameplay. But AI The Somni Files is a bit on the darker side. Um, it is um, M rated. For trigger warnings, um, definitely if you don't like eye gore at all, um, I would be a little cautious when trying this. Um, definitely, I think, look at the trailer because I think they do show sort of what the eye gore will look like um, if that's not something you want to see. But yeah, I'm really happy that I finally got around to playing this and I'm really excited to play the sequel. Um, hopefully sometime soon. I've heard really good things about it in that it's its own story, so it's not necessarily connected to this first game here. Um, so I'm, I'm curious sort of how they um, went about um, this new storyline. All right, next I'll just briefly talk about all the games that I have was sort of dabbling with this month. First being Pokemon Legends Arceus. So I didn't get super far in this game yet. I um, just visited a few different areas. And I've just been taking my time doing the little side missions and casually just capturing all the different Pokemon. So that's been really fun to visit Pokemon in this new way. Um, I did grow up with uh, Pokemon Silver as my first Pokemon game and then I went back to Pokemon Yellow when I was like in grade school. And I'm going to just first apologize that my Pokemon knowledge is very limited, but from my understanding is that this does have a bit of tie-in to second gen and being almost sort of like a prequel. So it's been interesting to see um, Pokemon through um, this new lens. Now as someone who hasn't played all the Pokemon games, just a few here and there, so I thought Arceus was a good step forward into that direction that a lot of people want um, with sort of the real-time combat um, with having Pokemon and 
um, catching them out in the wild. The reason why I've only really touched the first few environments is because I could see myself easily getting burned out by this game. So that's why I've been sort of taking my time with it. It does sort of get repetitive over time, especially to fill up your Pokédex, you have to capture the same sort of Pokémon multiple times and using different ways to fill out their information. And so I didn't really find that very interesting. Again, as a casual Pokémon fan, um, I never really filled out all the Pokédexes um, in the mainline games or tried to breed them for a whatever um, stats um, or go shining hunting or anything like that. So I don't really, I think, have the patience that a lot of very dedicated Pokemon fans do have. And while I do appreciate that they're trying to build upon a story so far, and it was a bit more interesting than the last one I played, which was um, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond on the Switch, would really be enhanced if they added more voice acting and maybe some more complex storylines. But Again, I think it's hard to balance something that originally was meant for kids um, with more adult fans um, that grew up with Pokemon. So Pokemon, I think, has been rather stagnant in that they're trying to keep with the same demographic and not grow with their audience. And so I don't think Arceus is necessarily an answer as a way to grow with the fandom, um, but I think it is a good first step. It's, I guess my conclusion so far, and again, I've only just dabbled with this game. I haven't seen it through the end um, to see uh, where the story goes or um, if there's any interesting um, new gameplay mechanics they add on later after the first couple areas. All right, so the next game I dabbled with was Metroid Samus Returns on the 3DS. And so this is my first Metroid game and so far I'm actually really enjoying it. There are a few parts that I felt like I got stuck and that I wasn't really sure what to do. The game doesn't give you too much direction, um, so I had to kind of explore and um, figure out what ability or something I had to do to get to the next area. Thankfully, I didn't spend too much time trying to puzzle things out. And so far, my experience has felt almost arcade-like in that um, I kind of have to do multiple tries um, to kind of progress to the next part before I die. So it's been a bit of a learning curve so far, and I don't remember how many hours I spent so far. Maybe four or five? So I think I have a better grasp on how all the controls work and how to approach different enemies in the boss fights. But yeah, overall I'm enjoying it and it's been a good game to do in between play sessions of other games I found. So I've been taking my time with it and slowly kind of learning how to play it and I'm hoping to finish it sometime soon. So briefly, I do want to talk about Crosscode here. So I did end up revisiting it and after still being a little frustrated with the controls, I finally went into the settings and I changed the controls, which I always forget to do whenever I feel really awkward with um, the presets. I don't know about you guys, but I always it's always an afterthought of, oh, I probably should see if I could change the controls. Before, I think the controls were maps a little bit better for maybe a pro controller or something um, when using the back trigger buttons, which is really awkward on Switch Lite. So I'm really glad that I finally figured out to how to change the controls and I've been enjoying this a lot more. I progressed a bit further in the story. I will say when it comes to the puzzles, while I do like how innovative they are, I feel like I've gone back to geometry when it comes to kind of the ricocheting beams and trying to get the right angles to hit certain objects. So while that's an interesting puzzle mechanic, um, it's starting to get a little old because they keep reusing those same strategies to get through certain areas and whatnot. So the further along I get in this game, I'm hoping they introduce some interesting other puzzle mechanics rather than just reusing the same ones. And so for my other 3DS game, um, SMT Double Survivor 2, um, sadly, I have not made much progress on this and I have a reason why. I didn't play too much of this game last month and I think the main reason for that is because I didn't want to get into a long JRPG right before Xenoblade 3 comes out. So I think that's why I've been so hesitant to pick this up, even though the bit I did play in June, I really did enjoy. And I, of course, adored the first game. So um, I feel like I'm going to get sucked into this game, but I didn't want to get sucked in quite yet. So I'm leaving off Devil Survivor 2 probably for, to be honest, I'm probably not going to touch it at all during August. So hopefully sometime in September. I'll be able to return to that game in the right mindset. So what I've been doing instead is I've returned to these two games. At first I will talk about 
um, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. So the reason why I brought this out again was I wanted to replay Future Connected. So that is the extra story that they add once you beat the base game. And so there are a few reasons why I wanted to revisit this. I kind of didn't spend that much time on Future Connected. I think that's mostly because I did spend like 100 hours in just Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. And that was kind of just doing all the different side quests and beating all the rare monsters and things. And so after I set that down, I then learned later that there was this extra story that I had no idea was on the cart and a sort of side story of the aftermath of what happens in the first game. So when I initially played that, I kind of just flew through it and I didn't do all the side quests and things. So um, I wanted to return to it and um, to kind of just fill it all out. So I did, I think, spend 13 hours in Future Connected. So I'm glad I ended up doing that because there were a lot of things I did miss. And it was fun to revisit these characters again in preparation for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And there's also another reason why I wanted to revisit uh, this side story in particular. I guess a little hint for my next video, but um, you'll see soon why that is. And then I also did the DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 here. And I was surprised how much extra content was actually on that um, code. So the DLC does give you a ton of extra items, including core crystals that help you unlock blades. So my main objective when putting this guy up again was to kind of help build up my blade inventory and hopefully unlocking most, if not all of them. I'm still missing about five or six. So despite having all those rare core crystals, um, the gotcha mechanics just make it so burdensome to try to go through them all uh, to unlock them. I was happy though that I finally got Cosmos, who um, is the character that was in the original Xenosaga games. So yeah, I had a lot of fun unlocking the new blades and kind of filling out a little bit of their skill trees and learning more about them, um, as well as going on some of the additional side quests that they offered. And I also went to the challenge arena, which was kind of a new space um, where you could meet some of the other blades that you could recruit um, from previous games, which I thought was kind of cool. But yeah, I just wanted to say that the DLC was a lot of fun and it makes me wonder what Season Blade Chronicles 3's DLC is going to be like because my game hasn't arrived yet. It's supposed to come any day now. But from what I've heard, Season Blade Chronicles 3 is just a huge, immense game. So uh, Season Blade 2 I thought was already big and adding on all the DLC and whatnot, it just felt huge and I've already sunk in a ton of hours into that game alone. So I'm thinking when it comes to August, the only game I'm just going to be immersed in is going to be Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So that's probably the only game I'm going to be talking about next month. So that's a heads up. All right, so that's my wrap up for July. Um, again, I think I kind of just dabbled in a lot of games after finishing AI The Somni Files, which I'm okay with. I'm really hoping I finish Xenoblade Chronicles 3 in August. Um, I'm not really sure how doable that will be, but fingers crossed. I'm hoping that in September, um, right before Trails from Zero comes out, I'll be able to finish a few more games that I've been in between, um, as well as a couple that are sitting in my backlog that I'm hoping to at least start. But yeah, the summer has been quite jam-packed, so um, it's been really fun um, just dabbling in a lot of different games and um, hopefully trying out a few more in the future. So let me know what game you're playing and if you've been playing any of the recent games that came out, like Live Alive or Digimon Survive or Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um, and until my next video, bye guys.